Hi everyone, and welcome to my first of two videos on the Minolta XG1 with no hyphen. The XG-1 is the same camera, they just changed the name of it. But uh, this is, anyway, I'm not going to do a separate video for that. This is for the XG-1 with or without a hyphen. This is an interchangeable lens multi-mode SLR. It has a center-weighted meter with shutter speeds of 1 second to 1 1,000th and bulb. The viewfinder magnification in the back is 0.87 with a 93% frame coverage. And what the frame coverage means is that if this is what you were seeing, if this was the film, the image that would end up on your film, then about 3.5% of the top, bottom, and each side would not appear in the viewfinder. So it's always better to have a little bit more image on your film than a little bit less, obviously. It has a matte Fresnel focusing screen with split ring and micro prism collar. And the flash syncs at 1 60th and X for, uh, the flash syncs at 1 60th of a second for X flash and various speeds for M and FP. However, M and FP bulbs aren't really made anymore. So X flash is really what's important. That's the modern electronic type of flash that you can just pick up at a store today. Minolta introduced the XG as a scaled down version of the XGE. It is a mid-range camera. It has less viewfinder display than the XGE. It, does, it also does not have the XGE's detachable back. The back on this is fixed at the hinge. And it also lacks the XGE's memo holder on the back. It was produced by Minolta from 1979 until 1982 in Japan. It was preceded by nothing, really. It was a, a budget spin-off of the XGE, and uh, it developed somewhat from the XG7, but it was really intended to fill a new market gap and didn't stem directly from an existing camera that was in that market space. It was produced concurrent with the XGE and XGSE and followed directly by the XGA. So if you have your XG1 with you, we can start taking a look at some of the features on the camera. And we'll start with the top. Even though they're on the sides, these are the camera strap lugs and that's where you would put your camera strap. We also have the main switch, which is this switch right here that selects between battery check, on, and battery check, it springs back. You can't just leave it in battery check. On, off, and self timer. This is the film rewind knob that also opens the film back and the film rewind lever. Here we have the hot shoe, and this is the only camera I've ever seen that has the serial number in the hot shoe, which strikes me as absolutely ridiculous because that's a pretty easy to replace part. But at any rate, it's an X-Flash hot shoe with a single contact for communicating flash data and then there's a serial number in it. And then to the right of that, we have the mode dial, which is either A for aperture priority mode or a shutter speed to shoot in manual mode. It has the ASA dial in it and this is a silver ring. You have here your exposure compensation switches and then your shutter release right here, your film advance lever, frame count window, and an interesting feature I've never seen on another camera. There's this little black window up here, and it has a red bar in it that lets you know when your film is loaded properly by being a little sliver of red. And then as your, as your roll progresses through, you get more and more red in there. It, it's interesting. It's it's uh, creative and an interesting idea. And this button right here, uh, this little silver button I, I missed, is your mode lock button. So it locks the dial in place. So when you're in aperture priority mode, you can't accidentally switch to a to a shutter speed and go into manual mode. On the camera's front, we have the self timer and battery check light, which. You can see lights up when I ch test the battery check. And when you are in the self timer, it flashes as it counts down. Uh, this silver ring is the lens mount. Then there's the meter coupling pin up here along the top that allows the lens to communicate metering data to the camera. 
This is the lens mount index dot. This is your lens release button right here. Then we have the shutter, the cable release for your shutter right here. This is something I think is absolutely ingenious about this camera. They put a cable release port on the side, which will allow the cable release to be out of your way more easily. Then we also have a flash PC socket right down here. The camera's back doesn't have a whole lot to show. It's got the viewfinder up here, and then there's a couple of accessory grooves on each side of the viewfinder, so you can mount different things into the viewfinder, such as magnification uh, uh, magnifiers or right angle pieces. And then it also has an ASA to DIN conversion table on the back. So here we are on the camera's bottom. We have the uh, battery, well, first thing we have over here is some masking tape that's covering up the former owner's name, phone number, and social security number. Figured he might not want that on the internet. You're welcome, Mike. Uh, one thing this brings up is if you own a camera, it's a great idea in today's age of privacy concerns and identity theft to not put your social security number on it. In fact, I remember my first camera, I was told, oh yeah, you should put your social security number on it in case it's recovered. Then they can find out who owns it and you can prove that it was yours. In the modern world, that's a stupid idea. Please don't do that. Here's the battery chamber door, the tripod bushing. We also have the film release button right here. And then the power winder mechanical coupling and power winder electrical coupling right there. And unlike higher end cameras, those things are just out for the world. Uh, they, aren't, they aren't underneath their own covers to protect them from, from the weather or other elements. Going inside of the camera. Here we have the battery chamber, or I'm sorry, here we have the film cassette chamber. That's where the fresh film goes. This is a film guide pin that helps the film unroll properly. We have these six silver dashes. Those are the top and bottom guide rails, and they help to keep the film from moving like this as it travels. The internal guide rails help keep the film flat on plane as it travels. Shutter curtain. This is the film tension sprocket film take up spool on the back of the camera on the camera's door we have a Minolta auto winder G sticker to let you know which power winder to use with your camera this is the film pressure plate that helps keep the film flat on plane as it travels and this is a cassette tension spring which keeps the cassette properly aligned so that the film can come out of the camera basically everything with this camera inside of it is designed to keep Basically everything inside of the camera is designed to keep the film flat on plane. So some notes about this camera. It is an aperture priority mode camera when you put it in A, and it is a full manual camera when you have it in any other shutter speed. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the second video. It is an excellent option for students as well as experienced users if you want a backup body to take around with you that it's not the end of the world if it gets beat up. This is a pretty good option. It's very capable. And if you're just learning, it's also a very, very good option because it has full manual mode and it also has aperture priority mode so you can learn a little bit about shooting in a couple of different styles. A couple of things not to do with your camera. Don't touch the mirror because you can get your finger oils on the mirror and that is a good way to take the silver off which will impede your camera's ability to function properly and the image quality coming through the viewfinder you can't focus as well just don't touch the mirror they're surface coated so if you touch it and try to clean it you may well take the silver off of it don't touch the shutter curtain inside you don't want to touch it and damage it you also don't want your finger in there when it closes because both of those are really good ways to brick a camera don't leave your camera or lenses in your car because the heat and the cold will damage them and the oils, what happens is the oils get thin or they break down 
and then they get into places where they're not supposed to and they impede camera operation or in electronic cameras like this one which just has electronics and circuitry in it they can actually cause a short which will ruin the camera completely don't store your camera in a plastic bag or box because moisture will get in there and it will cause all kinds of interesting devastation fungus can grow and fungus will grow on your lenses and in your camera because it likes to eat the coating that is on the glass and also don't let your camera get wet this is an entry level to mid-range level camera and it has uh, no weather sealing so if water gets into it it will cause a short on the circuitry and it will ruin your camera so your, your camera is a precision tool and as long as you treat it with care and respect it will treat you well if you have any questions please leave them below i'm pretty good about responding fairly quickly if this video was helpful please give me a thumbs up that lets me know i'm on the right track and producing content which is useful for you guys if you have suggestions for future videos ideas things like that let me know and if i have the technical knowledge and equipment i'm more than happy to film them for you you can also subscribe to find out when I have more videos about film photography techniques and things like that that are coming out. And one last thing, thank you guys for watching. We also have the lens mount, which is the silver ring right here. And dang it. <laughs>